This video is all about ratios, simplifying ratios, dividing in a ratio and comparing ratios and fractions. Hello, welcome to Maths Kitchen. I'm James and this channel is here to help you with all things maths related, regardless of your age or ability. So whether you're just learning ratio for the first time or it's part of your maths GCSE revision, welcome. It's good to have you here. Let's get started. First up, what is a ratio? A ratio is just a way of comparing two or more quantities. For example, the ratio of purple sweets to green sweets is three to five because there are three purple sweets and five green sweets. And you can see how we write it there with the colon in between the numbers or the ratio of likes to dislikes on this YouTube video, not actually this YouTube video, is 558 to 12. So that's what a ratio is. The next thing to look at is how to simplify a ratio. Actually, before that, why do we simplify a ratio? Well, it's just to make the numbers smaller and so easier to understand. It's exactly the same technique as when you simplify a fraction. We're trying to make the numbers as small as possible. And we do that by finding the highest common factor of both numbers. What's the largest number that goes into both of them? Or in other words, what's the largest number they can both be divided by? In this first example, four to 12, four goes into both those numbers. They can both be divided by four. So that's what we do, divide them both by four. So how many times does four go into four? Well, just once. And how many fours go into 12? It goes in three times, so we end up with a ratio of one to three. In this example, there are three numbers. Don't worry about that. We still just do the same thing. We look for a number that all of them can be divided by. You can see that all three numbers are in the five times table, so they can be divided by five. 10 divided by five is two, 25 divided by five is five, and 30 divided by five is six. So we end up with a ratio of two, to five to six. In the third example, the numbers are a lot larger, so it's less obvious what the highest common factor is. But don't worry, we can do this in stages. First of all, we can see that they're both even numbers. So let's divide them by two. We now have 45 and 81. And I can see that both of those numbers are in the nine times table. They are divisible by nine. So if we divide them both by nine, we end up with a ratio of five to nine. There are some very simple ways to find out if one number can be divided by another. Tests of divisibility, we call them. These can be really useful in exactly these kinds of situations. I've made some videos on them um, and I'll put the links up here um, and at the end for, for those videos. Right, here are a few simplifying questions for you to practice. Pause the video and I'll put the answers up in a couple of seconds. Before we go on, I have a quick favor to ask to help me with future videos. If I could help you with anything to do with maths, what would the top two or three things be that you need help with? Um, let me know in the comments below. Right, there is another type of simplifying that can be useful to do, and that is when we write ratios in the form one to n. Well, what does that mean? It just means we simplify the ratio to make the first number one. And we do that by dividing by whatever that first number is. Um, in this example, we have the ratio four to 26, and we want to simplify it to make the first number one. But at the moment, the first number is four. So all we have to do is divide by four. We must remember that we have to divide both sides by four and 26 divided by four is six and a half. So we end up with one to six and a half. Incidentally, I have a video on how to quickly divide any number by four and I'll, I'll leave a link up for that as well. So why is it useful to do this? Well, let's say I know the ratio of flour to sugar in a particular cake recipe, okay? And it's 100 grams to 250 grams. I might want to know how much sugar there is for every one gram of flour so that I can easily compare the proportion of flour to sugar in this cake with the proportion in another cake. Here, I want to write the ratio 100 to 250 in the form one to n. The first number is 100, so I'm gonna divide both parts by 100. 
250 divided by 100 is 2.5. So we have one to 2.5. Right, 14 centimeters to 5.6 meters in the ratio one to N. Now, you have to be really careful with these because I don't know if you noticed, but those are different units of measurement. One is meters and one is centimeters, and it's really easy to miss that. So to be able to compare them in a ratio, we need them both to be using the same unit. So let's convert them both to centimeters. 5.6 meters is 560 centimeters. You just multiply by 100 to convert from meters to centimeters. Now, our first number is 14. So we want to divide both parts by 14. 560 divided by 14 is 40. And I must admit, I, I just use a calculator for that, but we could have used short division, you know, bus stop division. I use the calculator. So the ratio is one to 40. Here's a few of those for you to practice. Pause the video and I'll be back in a few seconds. The next thing we want to be able to do is to share things out in a particular ratio. Uh, before we do that, if you found this video or any of my other videos helpful, you can easily support the channel by giving the video a like or subscribing or sharing it with your friends. Any of those things actually make a huge difference in helping the channel to grow. So if you've already done any of those, then thank you very much indeed, it is really appreciated. Right, back to ratios. Let's say you and a friend have done some work clearing someone's garden and you've been paid a total of 30 pounds between you. You did three hours work and your friend did two hours work. So it would make sense to try and split the money up to reflect the different amount of work that you put in. In, in fact, it would make sense to use the ratio three to two. Your three hours compared to your friend's two hours. So the first step then is to add the numbers in the ratio to work out the total number of hours that you've worked you know, between you. So in this example, you worked three hours and your friend worked two hours, so that's a total of five hours. Then you want to share out the 30 pounds equally between those five hours. In other words, we want to divide 30 pounds by five, which is six pounds. This means that each hour worked earns six pounds, right? You work three hours, so you get six times three, which is 18, and your friend worked two hours, and two times six is 12, so they earned 12 pounds. And the nice thing about doing these ratio questions is you can check whether you've made an, you know, any obvious mistakes by adding the amounts together at the end to check that, you know, in this case, it should add up to 30 pounds. 18 add 12 is 30, so we can be pretty confident that we haven't made a mistake. In this second example, we're asked to divide 51 sweets in the ratio nine to eight. So the context is different, but we go through the exact same process. First of all, we add the two parts of the ratio, in this case, nine and eight, which is 17. And then we divide the amount that we're sharing by this. So here we do 51 divided by 17. You could think of this as splitting that pile of 51 sweets into 17 piles. Each pile then will end up with three sweets. And we want to put eight piles of sweets together, which would give us 24, eight times three is 24. And then we want to put nine piles of sweets together, uh, which gives us 27. And again, we can just check we haven't made a mistake by adding those back up to make sure that we still have 51. And yes, 24 add 27 adds to 51. So we're good to go. Last example, share 45 in the ratio of two to three to four. We've got three numbers now, but it doesn't really matter. We still just go through that exact same process. So first we add the numbers together. So two, add three, add four, which is nine. And now we divide 45 by nine, okay? Which gives us five. Then we multiply each of the numbers in our original ratio by five. So two times five is 10, three times five is 15, and four times five is 20. And again, just to check, 10 add 15 add 20 is 45. So that's how you divide a number in a given ratio. Here's a few of those for you to practice. Pause the video and I'll be back in a few seconds. The last thing that I want to look at in this video is the relationship between fractions. 
and ratios. So if we go back to the earlier question where you and a friend worked clearing a garden and you had done three hours work and your friend had done two, this time, instead of thinking in terms of a ratio, we want to know what fraction of the work you did. And to do this, all we need to do is find the total number of hours, which was five, and express the number of hours that you worked as a fraction of that total. Three out of five, in other words, okay? Which, which is three fifths, isn't it? So you did three fifths of the work. The ratio of men to women at a squash club is 11 to nine, and you are asked what fraction of the members are women. Well, you find the total number of parts, in other words, nine and 11, which is 20, and then you write the number of parts that are women, which is nine, as a fraction of that total, nine twentieths, in other words. So nine twentieths of the members of the squash club are women. Final example, the number of apples to pears to oranges in a fruit bowl is five to four to two. What fraction of the fruit is apples? Well, five add four add two is 11. So there are 11 parts in total and five of them are apples. So five elevenths are apples. Here's a few of those for you to practice. Pause the video and I'll be back in a few seconds to wrap things up. So that's it. Those skills form the basis of everything you need to know to do with ratios for your GCSEs. In a GCSE exam, there's a good chance a ratio question won't be given to you in quite such a nice, simple format like the ones we've looked at today. Uh, the examiners want to know whether you can use those skills to solve a problem. Worded questions, in other words. So I've done a second video where I go through some worded exam questions and I talk you through how you can do those as well. That will be up in the next week or so, so be sure to subscribe and click on notifications to be alerted when that comes out. Um, otherwise, that's it. Keep practicing. Let me know below if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.